Today we're looking at the Java GUI framework that we'll be using for a class as well as as a baseline framework or boilerplate for the entire year. Again, we're going to continue with our model view controller structure. This is one of the main paradigms used in programming today. It allows for a great separation of code, keeping your logic, your visual pieces, as well as your modeling objects separate but allowed to be linked together. Here we have our class diagram using the UML that we've been looking at in class. Over here in the green, we have all of our controller objects specified by the package first and then by the name of the class. As you can see, the controller package here denoted in green has a runner as one of its main objects with a static void string arg, aka PSVM listed right here. And note that it doesn't have any of the arrows surrounding it because it doesn't have as a has a relationship the same components we see in the rest of the project. We also have in our green the controller and the controller has a has a relationship denoted by the diamond line here with the frame and an array list of the what's it object. The frame has a single entity right here using the one over here as the line on that and it has inside its package of view the GUI frame and we're noting that it extends JFrame to show that relationship that it has another relationship inside it. It has a base panel which is an instance of the GUI panel class and links back to the controller by maintaining a reference to it as base controller. It also has a private setup frame method here denoted as a void type. It also has here one or more of the GUI panel which also extends J panel and as we can see here in the data member section the GUI panel has many components that it holds as part of it and then we have listed here our three helper methods setup panel, setup layout, and setup listeners that we'll go into more detail in just a moment. Finally, we have in pink, we have our model package, and in this case we're using a what's it, just a nice little placeholder class so we can show the relationship and the passing of both values and references to objects, and any needed methods will belong there as well. In the controller package, we only have two files right now. We have our GUI controller.java as well as our GUI runner.java. The GUI runner only has the PSVM or public static void main, because all it has and all it does is starts the program. So that's pretty much the standard code we've been using all year and will continue to use for the rest of the year. In our controller.java, we have our start method, that way that we control what we're starting up. And then additionally, we have a link between our view and our model. Because again, the controller itself functions as a go-between from the view that the user sees and the back-end stuff that the programmer has designed to interact that will be showing to the user itself. In our model package, like I said, we simply have the what's it.java. This is just a nice little placeholder class we're using to show that relationship and to be able to we have the interaction between the view and the model and the controller and that there's a p information that passes multidirectionally in those areas. In our view package, we have a little bit more. We have our GUI frame.java, which extends JFrame, so it has access to all the components and methods of JFrame, but it also has the ability to do more. That extends keyword shows that inheritance relationship that we'll be using quite a lot. Additionally, there's a helper method to set up the components to make that frame work properly. In our GUI panel.java, we extend JPanel, again getting access to everything inside JPanel, and we have helper methods to set up our layout, our panel, and the listeners. And again, this is where all the user interaction happens. The user does 98% of their interaction here inside the panel. The frame itself, that part of the view, is only used to hold the panel and to close the application. Looking a bit more closely at the GUI frame, this is where we have a constructor passing a reference to that because we want to actually send that information so we have access to it later on. And so by passing a reference, we affect and interact with the original controller that is part of the actual application. Again, we have our setup frame helper method. And that helper method we use to set the content pane, create the size, and make sure as that last step of the setup frame method, we set its visibility so we can actually see the application. In our GUI panel, we go a little more detail even further. We have our constructor also being passed a reference to the object controller, so we can keep that link interacting between the view and the controller and the model. Further, we have all visible components of the model are data members. Again, those are private and they're listed up there in our declaration section so we can have access to them and use them as necessary. Specifically in that data member section, we have a layout manager. The layout manager we're going to be using most of the time is a spring layout that we're going to use to actually arrange our GUI implementation so we can drag our buttons and fields, etc. around on the application's panel or frame and use them as we like. And so we'll be using, again, a spring layout for that part of the swing library. We also have our helper methods inside GUI panel. This is where we're doing a lot more work and we'll have that set up for us. 
The first one is our setup panel method, and this is where we set up our layout manager first and then add all of our components that are being seen inside the panel to the actual layout manager so it can distribute them as necessary. Our next helper method is the setup layout method, and this is the one we do not actually write ourselves. Rather, this is where we place the information from the auto generation of the code by using the window builder so it can put it in and have it in a nice, clean, organized spot. And this is again where all of our whatever constraints method gets called and is placed inside that. Finally, we have our setup listeners method. This is where we create and add access to all of the interaction that we'll use to actually do stuff with the user. So when we click on a button, something happens rather than simply being a useless button. And so the setup listeners method will contain all that information and have it easily available and again, clean and organized so we can keep our code looking good throughout the application.